Hi, study point. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, everybody. Hi, hi study point. point. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> Good morning, Stony Point. We're so happy to see you and uh, can't wait to be with you in church. We're praying that God blesses you during this uh, difficult time. Hi, dear friends. We love you. We miss you so very much, and we can't wait to see you at church. Good morning, everybody. I miss you. Hi, we miss everybody. I miss seeing your beautiful faces. Hi, church family. We miss you. We miss you all. Can't wait to be back in church. We miss, miss you. you. Can't, can't wait, wait to, to see, see you. you. We're looking forward to seeing you all again. We love you, Stony Point. We're missing you and praying for you and hoping that God is blessing you during this unique season. Hey, church kids. I sure do miss your faces, and I'm praying for you, and I'm praying that you're staying strong and encouraged. I love you, and I miss you. We miss you so much, and we wish we could be with you. And as soon as this is up, uh, we can't wait to fellowship with you all. Sending all our love. Love you. Love you guys. We love you, church. We love and miss you, church family. Can't wait to see you. Happy Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. Good morning, we want to welcome you once again. And as you can see, we are definitely missing one another and being here with one another, but we are still worshiping together. And the same God that we worship every Sunday when we gather in this place is the God that we worship today at home. And so we are so glad you have joined us for that. There are a few things that we just want to make you aware of. First of all, as this continues to go on, we want to make sure that we're communicating with you and you can connect with us on our social media through Instagram and Facebook or through our email list. And you can sign up for that at info at spcfcog.org. You definitely want to take a look there. We have some things planned over the next couple weeks that could maybe allow us to see one another in person uh, using social distancing and masks and all of those precautions, but would allow that. And so we'd love for you to be a part. So please make sure you sign up for all those things. And thank you again for joining us in this way. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Trevor. All right, let's stand and worship the Lord together. Let's sing to the Lord a new song this morning and invite his presence into our worship this morning. God, we invite your presence here, Lord. May you be with us as we worship you. We love you, Jesus. Amen.
the Lord, because I've got a praise ringing within my soul, and I'm not ashamed to declare it now.
morning and welcome to Stony Point Christian Fellowship. It is so good to be with you again this Sunday morning. Good to be able to open up God's word and study together. Every time I come to this pulpit, I come with a desire to hear from God as to what I should share with you. And that is my endeavor and my hope every time that I come and to be true to God's word. It is especially true this morning in that which that God has laid on my heart to share with you. I don't believe that there is anything, any wisdom, any truth, any insight, any revelation that I can give beyond God's word. But I do believe that there are times that the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts and leads us specific to God's word for a specific time and a specific moment. And I believe we are at one of those moments in the journey of our church. I have sought God for the last few weeks as to what I would share with you today. It has weighed heavy on my heart and it has led me to the place of crying out day after day for God to lead my words and to anoint my thoughts. So I ask you to turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter one. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about Paul's missionary journeys. And I wanna parallel that with the journey of Stony Point and where we are now, where we have been and where God is taking us. The book of Philippians is one of my favorite books of the Bible. It is a book about joy. In four short chapters, the Apostle Paul uses the word joy 59 times. He uses the verb rejoice in some form multiple times in addition to that. He writes with affection to the church at Philippi and he writes from prison. To fully understand the book of Philippians, you have to go to the book of Acts chapter 16 where Luke reveals to us and records for us what happened in Philippi on Paul's second missionary journey. It tells us, Luke tells us the events that took place that Paul in his travels and in his establishing a missionary group to travel with him to spread the gospel that, um, that he saw miracles, he established churches, he saw the hand of God work in miraculous ways. And by the time he writes to the church at Philippi, the church is about 11 years old. It had been established about 11 years early by the Apostle Paul in what we see recorded in Acts chapter 16. The events of Acts, Acts chapter 16 sets up Paul's letter to the Philippians. And you can't fully understand what he's saying and get the words from God that Paul is writing until you understand how he blended with the people of Philippi. He writes so affectionately in the book of Philippians because of the work that God did in him and through him and with the people and the church of Philippi. And they became one in mission. He writes differently to the church at Philippi than all the other epistles that he writes. He begins by introducing himself in Philippi as a servant, a bond servant to the Lord. In his other letters, he establishes his authority by declaring himself to be an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Philippi, he approaches them with this very tender, relational, pastoral word. In Acts chapter 16, we see that Timothy joins Paul and Silas in their missionary work that they are endeavoring to go into Asia Minor to preach and several times they, they try to go in to uh, share the gospel in Asia and God stops them and the scripture tells us at least twice that the spirit of the Lord prevented them from going I tried to imagine in my own mind and my own heart what what that must have looked like what what happened when the spirit impressed upon Paul no you can't go there and Paul said but I want to go there and spread the gospel and they need the gospel so badly and the spirit of the Lord said no there will be another time and there was later another time after Paul went to Europe that the gospel went to Asia but two times the spirit of the Lord said to Paul and the scripture says the Holy Spirit said no 
And then in his sleep, Paul has a vision. And it's a vision of a man of Macedonia asking him to come and help them. That they need Paul to come and preach the gospel to them. And so they arise the next day and they take out from Macedonia. And in Macedonia, as they enter Macedonia, they come to a major city of Philippi, which is the center of this region of Macedonia. And so they end up in Philippi. And Paul must have ended up in Philippi feeling like he was there under the providence of God. That God had led him there. Now, when I read about the Apostle Paul, and I read about Peter, and I read about the disciples, and I read about how God worked miraculously in the lives of the characters of of Scripture, the people of Scripture, I think to myself, that's a miraculous work of God, not realizing that God works the same way in our lives today. He guides us the same way. He has guided my journey in Him. I landed in Santa Rosa, I believe, by the providence of God. I will not tell you the other churches that were offered to Tammy and I when we were very young to go pastor because they are not cities as fair and as nice as Santa Rosa and I do not publicly want to in any way disparage those towns. If you ask me later, perhaps I would reveal them to you. But I can tell you that I believe that there were events in my journey to arrive here at Stony Point where God said no and no and go. And we ended up here. And I ended up here driving around believing that we were here under the providence of God. That God was, had led us here and that we were on our journey with the Lord and that God was with us. When I think about God saying no to Paul, I've heard God say no to me. And there are people who doubt that God speaks to us. But if we do not have the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our life, we are badly in trouble. And in the present circumstances that we are in, if we do not have the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our life and and the work that the Holy Spirit does in our lives in producing all that God has for us in our lives, then we are in a mess. And we see Paul arrive in Philippi knowing that he's where God put him because God said no everywhere else and led him here. And while there... He preaches the gospel, and when he preaches the gospel, the gospel is revealed to a lady called Lydia, a seller of purple, a very wealthy lady, and she comes to salvation, comes to believe in Christ Jesus, and is baptized. So later, when he writes the letter to Philippi, uh, the church of Philippi, 11 years later, he's saying, I'm writing to you on the basis of the fact that God did some stuff while we were there. God worked some miracles. God did some miraculous things. We saw some wonderful things happen. The Bible records for us in Acts chapter 16 that God added to the church all of the time and the church grew and was blessed. But here we get the story of a lady who came to a saving revelation of who Jesus is and who accepted the gospel and who became a follower of Christ and a co-worker of the Apostle Paul. While there in Philippi, Silas and Paul are followed daily by a a lady who, a young girl who is filled with a demon and who uh, proclaims that they are men of God and that they are there to share the gospel. And that bothers everyone to the point that they they are arrested and put in jail. And while in jail, they are chained, they are beaten and chained and thrown into jail, beaten publicly accused publicly and thrown into jail. And while there, an earthquake happens and the chains fall from them and the jailer is just about to kill himself because he's afraid that if they go free that his sentence will be death. And they cry out to him, do not kill yourself. We're not going anywhere. You're not harm yourself. And the jailer goes to the powers that be, the magistrate, and says to him, this is what has happened And the magistrate says to the jailer, go back and tell those boys to leave. We've had enough of them. We don't need them stirring up trouble in our town anymore. So let them go. The jailer goes back to Paul and Silas. And Paul says, jailer, go back to the magistrate and say to him, you flogged us and beat us and threw us in jail with public accusation. You're not going to send us away uh, away in privacy. So the 
magistrate has to come back and say, we let you go. We send you away with our blessing, basically. And so Paul goes away, and we don't see any interaction between Paul and the church at Philippi until we get this letter 11 years later, written in Philippians chapter 1. Now, we can read Scripture and just read through it and rush through it and totally miss the essence of it and the depth of it and the maturity of it and the power of it if we're not careful. And you can read Philippians chapter 1 and miss it. But I believe it's the word of the Lord for our church today. I believe it's what God is saying to us. I know it's what God has said to my heart the last few weeks. I know it's where my mind is. I know it's where my heart is. I know it's where I believe we are in our journey at Stony Point. And I want to just share some things from Paul's very affectionate, very tender, very caring, very loving greeting in 11 verses. And we're going to be looking at the entire book over the next few weeks. But I want to look at the first 11 verses. And I got some things that I think God wants to say to us at this time. The scripture says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ. And, and that heading, again, I said to you earlier, that heading has impact. If you just read over that and you scan through that and quickly make your way, you don't get the, the, the point of it. Paul has no need to declare his credentials to them because they have always been co-laborers together. I've never felt the need to stand before this congregation and declare to you I'm the pastor. I've never felt the need to declare that I'm in any way on a pedestal of any sort. Please don't do that. I don't want to fall from anywhere. I've always been able to walk among you as a co-laborer. And it's always been a great joy of mine. And it's always been a tremendous privilege to know that we can be both friends and co-laborers together. As well as one who understood my calling and the calling that God put on my life. And you have been so wonderful in enabling me to be one of you. And then we get this all-inclusive nature of Paul at the church at uh, Philippi that's different than other places when he, when he writes to other churches he sometimes says you got a group among you that's uh, uh, living and walking in heresy and you got struggle going on you got this trouble happening and you need to be careful and you, and you need to wash it out you need to, you need to get it out of there root it out here he just he's, he's all it's such a church and it's such the spirit of God and, and I believe it's so much like Stony Point that, that uh, this is what I would say to you to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi. So he said, everybody in Philippi that's in Christ. Everybody, all of you. And, and there are versions that use the word saints. It said to all the saints in Philippi. To everybody. Even those of you who have faults. Even those of you who aren't perfect. Even those of you who make mistakes. Even those of you who have trouble. Even those who over the years in your journey have had ups and downs. All of you who declare that Jesus Christ is the divine Son of God and you believe and place your confidence for salvation in the grace of God. Together, all of you, and then he says this, and I want to say this. I've been looking for a way to say this the last few weeks. He says, to the overseers and to the deacons, I want to say to the overseers, the leaders of this church, how much I love you. How much the coronavirus has shown. We've got leaders around here we can count on. We've got leaders that hear from God that will step up in time of struggle and trial and tribulation and they will lead. And I have co-laborers on the staff of this church that are blessed and talented and gifted and we have seen them rise up and lead. And one thing that trouble clarifies is who you can count on. And I want to say thank you and acknowledge that in our journey together at Stony Point, I love you. From the depths of my being, I love you. I don't care if it's overly affectionate. I don't care if it seems over the top. 
I want everybody to know I am so proud and so grateful for the leadership of this church. And then he says, he makes this distinction of deacons because he doesn't want to leave out the part of the church that has to happen. That's the servants. That's all the people who make everything go. Who do everything. Who, who are behind the scenes. And they may not be leaders that stand behind here or up here. But they make everything go. And you know who you are. I wish I could call all your names but I'd miss somebody. But I got to tell you. I like the Apostle Paul want to say to you. To all of you overseers. And to all of you deacons. And to all you servers. And all you workers. And all you givers. I am so grateful. For the place we are in our journey. I am truly, truly grateful. And then he places this blessing upon them. Rosie sang the blessing this morning in our worship time. And he places this blessing. And I I wish I had time to just preach on the blessing. And the blessing is grace and peace to you from God. Oh, that's what I want for you this time. What we're going through now and all the stresses and all the trials. I want the grace and the peace of God. Our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ to be with you. I want you to know the grace and the peace of God. And then he starts to tell them in the next few verses. From verse 3 through verse 11. This is why after 11 years I want you to know. I've been trying to get over to see you. But I haven't been able to. I want to say to all of you the coronavirus is... Made it to where we don't get to see each other. We haven't been able to see one another. Oh, I long to see you. I long to be in the same room and to worship with you. I long to remind ourselves and to remind each other that we are bound together by the grace of God. We are bound together by common salvation. We are bound together because we are partakers in the grace of God and in the suffering of God. We are believers in the coming of Christ for us. And I long to be together. And here we go. This is what Paul says. And I don't know that you can write a better letter. I don't know that you. I don't know. I don't have any words that are going to be better than these words. I thank my God every time I remember you. You know, one of the things that's sitting around. Sheltering in place will do. And I've tried not to sit around. I've tried to get outside and work as much as I could. And labor and do a little working out and uh, but Tammy's been cooking so good we discovered Tammy can cook saving all kinds of money not going out and eating fine just blessed in what we're eating but one of the things is it gives you thinking time time where you sit around and you think about how good You go back in time, if you've got a little age on you and you've got a little experience, you've been on the road a little bit, you go back to landmarks in your life and you remember places like Philippi. You remember experiences where Ly- how Lydia got saved. I, my mind has gone back in the last few weeks to the moments where some of you got saved when we prayed together, the prayer of salvation. Where we stood at the end of an altar, a long aisle, and you said, I do to one another. Where you got baptized. Where we dedicated your babies, and we, we, we celebrated your births, and we, we met together in home goings and funerals for people, and we celebrated their lives together. And every time I remember those things, it reminds me to be thankful for you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership. And here he he goes. He tells them why. He's so unique in his relationship with Philippi than with every other church. Because he says, you have always been partners in the gospel from the first day until now. He's basically saying to them, you've been an easy church. You've been a church that's been easy to, to minister to and to minister with. I didn't get many calls where problems were going over in in Philippi. Your leadership took care of business. Your leadership took care of spiritual leadership, took care of practical leadership. Uh, The fellowship and the community and the hospitality of the church was always taken care of. And that's my testimony of Stony Point. Our journey has been one just like in Philippi where we have been partners since day one. Being confident of this, 
And here it is. And this is the word for Stony Point in our journey here. Being confident of this, and I am confident of this this morning, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on, not until the end of the coronavirus, not until the end of the present struggle, until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, all the way to the coming of Jesus. He began this work in us, we have, you have been faithful, you have been committed in every way, you have been steadfast, we have been the body of Christ to each other, we've seen God work miracles, we've seen God bless this church, we've been, we cried together, we prayed together, we've laughed together, we've rejoiced, we've buried, and we've given birth. And he has just begun. And what he has begun in us, he will be faithful to complete until the day of Christ Jesus. And then he says this, and I don't know why he writes this. I, I, I'm thinking, I, 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 from a human perspective, I understand he's saying to you, I know this must sound really, really uh, uh, mushy. Uh, for some of you, he, man, this is going to really be over the top. And, and, and read it out loud to the whole church and tell the men to settle down. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going over the top. He, he says this, it is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart. Since you are in my heart. Paul doesn't say that to any other church in the scripture. He says it to the church at Philippi. They've been no trouble to him. He, uh, he has fond memories of Philippi. It's they got people got saved over there. The church grew over there. They worked together over there. They got along over there. When they came into struggle and had trouble, they worked it out. They, they didn't blow up and implode and, and, and they didn't have a bad reputation in the city and the community. And they weren't a fighting church. They were, they were a church that got along and loved one another and cared for one another. Oh, how I long to be in Philippi. And he kind of doubles down and says, you know what? It's right for me to feel this way. Because you're in my heart. And he says this. And this is what I want you to hear too. Remember he's, he's writing this from jail. He's in house prison. In what we believe to be in Rome. Because later in Acts it is recorded. That he's going to have to stand before Caesar. And be judged before Caesar. And so he's in Rome. In prison probably. Or, or uh, probably in house prison. And he writes to them. Not a, no freedom. No, no, no place to go. And we don't even know how many times Paul was in prison. But he's writing this. And he's filled with this joy. It's right for me to feel this way about you since I have you in my heart. Whether I am in chains or defending, means he later he's going to stand up and defend himself against Caesar. Or confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. We're in this together. How many times have we heard that the last few months? We're in this together. I heard today, some guy said, we may all be in the same storm, but we're not in the same boat. And I've, I've had, we have people in our congregation that are struggling more than other people in our congregation. We're all in the same storm. But here the Apostle Paul says, what is the spirit of the church? And what God wants the spirit of the church to be is that we are all in this together. We share and confirming the gospel. All of you share in God's grace. He's saying, we have experienced the grace of God together. You want to know what binds us together? We share in the grace of God. And then he says, yes, God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Jesus Christ. We're going to discover in this book of Philippians that joy is not just this positive attitude or this forced happiness or this pie in the sky view of life. It is joy in a person and it is joy in the person of Jesus Christ. We rise above our circumstances knowing that who we are in Christ is greater than our circumstances. And therefore we can, by the grace of God, make it through anything and everything if we stay together in Christ. And we have. And I praise the Lord for that. He comes to this place where he says, and this is my prayer. 
that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in depth of insight. We have this bond of grace that makes us a, a, a very unique family. The spiritual family is a very unique family. We all cherish our biological families. And if you're blessed to be in a good, solid family, you just count your blessings. Uh, uh, I, I can testify to you that uh, the family that I have been in the last 40 years of my life that I married into by the grace of God has been a precious and dear family to me. And this church has been a precious and dear family to me. I've got brothers and sisters in this church that uh, are very, very dear and wonderfully close to me. And I am so blessed by that. And it is with the affection of Jesus Christ. And we are bound together in grace. But we are also bound together in the hope of sanctification. One of the great gifts of being on this journey together is we get to not only expect and anticipate, but actually see growth in each other. And I've seen that during this crisis. I'm telling you right now, I've said to Tammy several times, calling certain names in our church of people, I said, man, they have stepped up. They have blossomed. I've seen God use them. I, I see God's gift in their life. I see the anointing of the Lord upon them. I see God's blessing them. They have become so much a blessing to me pastorally and, and in my life here at the church and in the work of the church. I just got to tell you, I've seen God sanctify. What a wonderful experience. If we were talking about our biological family, we'd say, it's great to see the kids grow up. Watch them grow and mature and come into their own personality and, and, and understand who they are and start to develop some, some character and start to virtue come into their life. And you just get to see their development and, and you get to celebrate at every stage of their development. It's the same way in the family of God where you see baby Christians come to salvation and then they start growing. Sanctification through the work of the Holy Spirit happens in their life and they start to change and develop. And God formulates them to be exactly what he wants them to be. And we just get to stand back in awe. And be amazed at what God is doing in their lives. And i got to testify to you. I've been amazed at the sanctification work of God, that God has done in people in our church. And the growth and maturity that I've seen. This is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in depth of insight. So that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus. And then here at the end of his greeting, he says, after all of this, and we've talked about how much we love each other. And he's written how much he loves the people at Philippi. And he's, he's declared to them why he loves them so much. And what a joy it's been to be in ministry with them. And how blessed that he's felt to just know them. And how he longs to be with them. And while he's distant from them, and he's, they're still in his heart. He does all of that. And at the end of it, he says this. Please know this, that all that we have done has been to the glory and the praise of God. What makes this so wonderful and so unique and so powerful and so spiritual is that it is eternal and it's not about us. And it wasn't, to, it wasn't to our own glory. And it wasn't because uh, we wanted to, to fame or we wanted any kind of attention or anything of that nature. It's all to the glory of God and what made Philippi so different. And the reason I want to just recognize our church as, as a church like the church at Philippi. And I want to challenge us to continue to be a church like Philippi. Is because Paul looked at them and said, you are what the church is supposed to be. And I've got to tell you. This virus has once again reminded me that you are the church. You are what the church is supposed to be. And you have been that in these last few weeks and months where we've had to show up. And you have shown up in, in every way. And I am more than grateful. I'd love to be able to write you a beautiful letter like uh, Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. But let me just tell you, I love you. I'm grateful for you. I brag on you as often as I can. And I count it a privilege to be on this journey with you. And we're going to journey on until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Father, I love you and I praise you and I thank you. For all the many faces that you are bringing to my mind and you have for the last few weeks. 
those saints of God, those overseers and deacons who have been such wonderful people on this journey that Stony Point has taken by your providence. We have relied entirely upon your anointing and upon your call. We are not the source of any of our own power. We cannot produce peace. We cannot know joy without you. There is no hope outside of you. And yet we have all of this because of the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we see all of it operating in our church right now in the midst of this crisis. Father, I ask that you would be with and bless those who are struggling and who while they may be in the same storm as everybody else, their boat seems to be a little leaky and not quite big enough to protect them, they think. Remind them that if their boat goes down, you'll walk on water to them. Let them feel your presence, Lord. Lift them up out of the darkness right now, I pray, and show them the light again. Set them free. Show them that victory is your name. And that they will know victory again in you. Give them hope. Help us to be mindful to reach out to those that you bring to our minds. We need you, Lord, to speak to us as you spoke to Paul in the dream. We need you to speak to us as you spoke to Paul and Silas when you told him, no, don't go there, but go over here. We need you to lead us as you have always led Stony Point, and we are always grateful for that. We need you, Lord, to encourage those who need to be encouraged, those whose bodies need to be touched and restored. We ask, Lord, that you would restore them. We pray, Father, that you would bind us together as families. May we see this as a holy moment in you where we get to spend cherished time together. Strengthen marriages, I pray. Those who are struggling financially, Lord, we pray that you would be with them. Remind them that you own the cattle on a thousand hills. And that's just the beginning of what you own. And your desire is to bless them. And you will. You will restore to them what the locust has eaten. Father, fill each house this morning with your sweet presence. In your holy name we pray. Amen.